Good morning and welcome to New Day Northwest. I'm Kim Holcomb filling in for Margaret today. And what better way to start off the day than with a little cocktail party? Because we are so excited for the Downton Abbey movie to open. Here to show us a few drinks from the official Downton Abbey cocktail book is Isaac Vickner from Queen Anne's Tin Lizzie Lounge. So great to have you here. Oh, thank thank you. you for joining us. Of course. These are all sort of period drinks in a way. Have you watched Downton Abbey? Are you familiar with this? period piece. It's impossible not to be familiar with it, but I haven't watched it. Well, the good news is that my understanding of this film is you don't have to have seen the show in order to understand what's happening in the movie, but this right here, I mean, you can just look at the footage. You just kind of want to you just want to live there. You at least want to sit on that couch or walk in that Ooh, garden. I want a cane for sure. <laughs> and I guess having one of these cocktails is sort of the next big thing. Have you seen an increase in people's interest in these craft cocktails from yesteryear? I have, definitely. Um, craft cocktails are relatively new. People generally get a shot and a beer, mm -hmm. but if you introduce them to a craft cocktail, it's almost like a dining experience. They're, each one of these has a number of flavor layers, they call them, so you'll get spicy on the tip of the tongue and bitter on the back, so it's really a, basically a party in your mouth, which is why <laughs> in the shows they drink these things, at parties especially. So sure. It's a, a, both a conversation point and a delicious libation. Okay, we are going to attempt to make four of these libations today. So what are you going to start with? Great. So I'm going to start with the arguably the most classic one called The Last Word. Uh, this cocktail is actually discovered in an old cocktail book by one of Seattle's most famous bartenders who won World Bartender of the Year. Uh, his name was Murray Stinson. So this is possibly Seattle's only craft cocktail that was sort of it was born somewhere else, but it was reconstituted here, rediscovered. Um, and it's got some of the most interesting things in it. Okay. This is also possibly one of the most interesting types of alcohol. It's called chartreuse. It's made in uh, Grenoble by Chartreusian monks. Okay. And uh, only a few people know the recipe, um, and they're not allowed to meet. Okay. So in case one person dies in a Titanic accident or something. Someone else has someone the recipe. Someone else has the recipe, it keeps but going. they don't want it to be perverted, so they don't want anyone monkeying with it. it come, <laughs> it's 170 different alpine herbs. Okay. And it's the only alcohol that has a color named after it. So chartreuse wasn't chartreuse. The booze wasn't named after the color. The color was named after this. It's got a beautiful, rich green color. And that's what gives the last word its sort of signature color. When you see yeah. it in a glass, you you know that that's probably what you're getting there. And it has a flavor um, that is unlike any other. So when people say, well, what does it taste like? You have to say it tastes like itself. Right. <laughs> Try it. You might like it. Yeah, so we'll whip one of these up here. Okay. And um, it's got green chartreuse, um, Luxardo maraschino liqueur, and um, this is also an old recipe. This one, by the way, comes from uh, 1605. So it's vintage. It's definitely vintage. It <laughs> well predates any of the um, cocktails that you might find in uh, Downton Abbey. Yeah, and when Murray rediscovered this uh, this recipe, it was because it was pre-prohibition, right? So it was right. sort of forgotten about right. post-prohibition. So this is really, like when we're talking about Downton Abbey cocktails, this is definitely one that would have fallen into that era. Right, yeah. This is, um, I think, one of the best cocktails ever made. I love even your shaker looks, period. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> these great. are old. Copper is interesting. A lot of alcohols it made in copper stills, including this Sipsmith gin, where they take a giant copper urn and they have a guy standing next to it with a big mallet whacking on it day and night, 24 hours a day, all day. Um, and what that does is it kind of ionizes, like copper is a good conductor, so it makes, it charges the alcohol, so it gives you a little je ne sais quoi. <laughs> and so when you're drinking it, you need to know, someone worked very hard for you to yes, have Yes, exactly. Sip of if, it's, if it's from a, a, a traditional copper still. Right. What's the key to shaking? Can you overshake a drink? Uh, you can, actually. Okay. Martinis, so basically, you never want to shake anything that's brown. Okay. So if it's anything like whiskey or um, cognac, um, you want to stir it instead. And what you would do is just take the little spoon and then look off to the side, maybe put your pinky out mm. and give it a little stir. Mm, okay, good. <laughs> All right, so we have the first cocktail ready. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be such a pretty color. 
Ooh, the last word. The last word. Gorgeous. And it's got a specific aroma. Now, garnishes are something that usually makes the cocktail. Um, you can put a garnish in like a row of house-made brandied cherries, or you could make a zest on here with yeah. a lemon or a lime. This one generally comes with a lime zest, but if you want to make it pretty, you could add a uh, edible flower to it. It'll give it a little contrast. And when you're zesting, what you're actually going for is, instead of the lime juice, you're going for the oil from the lime peel. So I put the that twist. in there. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so we only have like four minutes left. Okay. So Great. show us the next one because I want to show people as many of these as possible. Perfect. Um, what, what do you want to do next? So the next one is actually from the book, from the movie. It's called The Cheerful Charlies. Okay. And um, I'm not sure what the story is behind it, but it's a vaudevillian act from the show. Um, so this one I've already pre-prepared because this comes in as a cocktail that is, I guess what they call gross. <laughs> A lot it, of craft, in the bad way. Well, hmm. a lot of crack, craft cocktail people have tried everything, and what they really want is something they've never tried, something with milk in it, or a whole egg, or something that's really unusual. Uh -huh. And this is one of those drinks because okay. it has Campari in it. Ah, Campari. Campari is a specially bitter liqueur that, before 1995, was colored with bugs. Okay. Beetles made the. Uh, Nice red flavor there. May I there. smell this? Yes. What makes the red flavor now? It's no more. It is. Uh, it's a dye. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's bitter and sweet at the same time, okay. which isn't a something that Americans like. I want to quickly show you another kind of zest. <laughs> All right. So this You're zesting the cheerful moment. Charlie. I am indeed. So this is called a flaming zest. Oh, well, that sounds exciting. And this will illustrate the oils that are present in citrus. So that gives the aroma into your nose and it coats the drink right there. And it looks super impressive the and flaming your friends zest. will be like, wow, that's what you how did. How did you do that? <laughs> the New York Sour. This is our non-alcoholic cocktail. It can be made alcoholic or non-alcoholic, but it has something called a floater in it. What is that? This is where you take something that's of a certain color and you pour it over a spoon. Ooh. Oh, this is Ooh. really sugary. And so this floater didn't work because this is extra sugary, but um, basically, if you pour something down the side, it will color the drink either from the bottom or the top. It's called layering a drink. Well, I can still see it on the bottom there. It looks like it's working pretty well at the bottom. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll float down there eventually and create a nice, pretty color for the cocktail. So as a cocktail drinker, are you supposed to mix that up and sip it that way? Do you want all of those flavors blended ultimately? Generally, I take a sip. Okay. And then, if, and then I give it a stir. Because okay. some things have like a wine floater on top. Um, and then the final drink is the most interesting. It's called the Corpse Reviver Number 2. Okay. And that one basically... And if we don't have time to make it, I can just let you know that Edgar Allan Poe wrote a bunch of stories, Follow the House of Usher and things like that, sure. about getting buried alive, which caused a wave of fear in London about getting buried alive. So people started burying bodies tied, with a be uh, tied to a bell um, on their toe. So if they started shaking in the middle of the night, the bell would ring, and then the graveyard shift would come around and dig them up. And this cocktail was the cocktail that you drank after you accidentally got buried alive. Okay. So if you have not been buried alive or reanimated for any reason, you still might enjoy this drink though. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> a delicious. It's so if you want to try a good craft cocktail, go with the Corpse Reviver number two. Corpse Reviver number two. I love this and uh, people can get these beverages at your bar. At, at the Tin Lizzie Lounge and a number of other craft cocktail lounges. And this is also something really special. Is that absinthe? Yes, this is absinthe and we're going to try a little bit of it because this is real absinthe. Oh. Absinthe is uh, made of wormwood, ground wormwood, okay. and it is not a hallucinogen. It's a muscle relaxant. Good, because I still have to do the rest of the show, so I need to be of sound mind and body for that, I probably. Mean, I think you'll do better. <laughs> okay. A little bit of absinthe. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. And uh, we will have the recipes for each of these drinks on New Day's website. Downton Abbey opens 
games in movie theaters tomorrow. And guess what? We have five pairs of passes to see Downton Abbey while it is in movie theaters. To enter to win a pair, just head to New Day's Facebook page and comment on the pin post at the very top. Good luck, everybody. Thank when you. we come back, our gal about town, Nancy Guppy, who just stole a cocktail from up here. She's celebrating <laughs> a major milestone in spotlighting artists of all mediums. A look back at 10 years of Art Zone next. Cheers. Cheers to you. Now I will take a sip.